Hello and welcome to Euphoria. In this video I'll be continuing my series on the design and build of a Lego modular building. This is going to be the town hall for my Lego city and have an important place right on the main square in the centre of the city. You can see all about the design of this mock in the previous episodes in this series where I walk through the design process and some of the choices made during the design. Today I'll be continuing the build of this mock and carry straight on from the previous episode in which I built the ground or main floor of the building. So in this episode I'm going to build the first or upper floor of the building. This is quite a large structure for a modular building so each floor level is built separately and even within this floor there will actually be four separate sections. As the whole thing is 64 studs wide, we split it into the main section as one build, with the wings on each side built as separate sections. The roof of the portico will also be built as another small build, so that it fits on top of the portico and it will be accessible by minifigs from doors in the front of the first floor. So I'm going to start by making the main section of the building, then I'll come on to build the wings and the roof of the portico later. I'm starting this section by making the floor plate for this level of the building. I'm making this in my normal way, which is to make it of two layers of plates, generally the larger plates on the top with smaller one by something or two by something plates underneath to connect them together and make an edge around the outside. This is quite a large floor plate as it's the full width of the main section of the building which is 44 studs wide. But that shouldn't be a problem as I've made floor plates for other mocks which were 48 studs wide and the one for the ground floor of this mock which was also 44 studs wide. There is a slightly complicated shape at the back which is to allow for the stairwell at the back of the building Before we proceed any further, let's just check that it does fit onto the ground floor properly. Yep, that seems to fit okay all the way round, so that's good. This floor plate is slightly fragile at the moment, particularly the bit sticking out at the back. That was also the case with the floor plate for the ground floor, but it soon tightened up when I added more layers of bricks and plates to the walls. I decided so far that I'm not adding a tiling layer to the floor of this level, although I found with the ground floor that the white floor plate looked a bit stark and I ended up adding a tiling layer there, so I may have to reconsider adding a tiling layer to this floor plate as well. There is a small washroom on this level of the building so that will go here and have an access from the central lobby 
and I am adding a tiled floor for this little room. Now I can make a start on building the walls onto the floor plate that I've just built. The windows on this level are built directly onto the floor plate, so I'm going to start by putting the window sills in place to mark their positions. Now I'm ready to add the first few layers of the walls in medium nougat for the outside walls and I'm using mostly those masonry profile bricks with the nice brick effect on the outside to continue the look and feel of the walls of the ground floor. There are some internal walls that are medium blue at the bottom. These define the central lobby area and they will sit directly over the equivalent walls on the ground floor. The walls at the sides here are also internal walls because the wings will go on the sides of this main section of the building. Now, before the walls get too high, I'm going to install the fixtures and furniture for this section of the building. I'll start with the fixtures for the washroom here, as this will be quite a tight space when the walls go up and I won't be able to fit them afterwards. There's just a water closet and a hand basin in this small washroom. Now looking at the furniture, if you followed along with the design then you'll have seen that I'm going to use a lot of the furniture from the Lego set The Office for this mock. There are loads of items of furniture in that set which I've taken out from the build of the set but kept intact. I've made some additional items of furniture in a similar style which I'll be using in this part of the build. On the right hand side of this floor is the admin support for the mayor's office. I'm using some of the desks and chairs from the office set for this area and a cupboard and filing cabinet. The central area is mostly circulation space to provide access to the stairwell at the back, the office spaces on either side, the washroom and the doors at the front that will give access to the roof of the portico. So there isn't much room for furniture in here, but I will be able to add a water cooler and I think we ought to try to find room for a coffee machine for all those hard-working staff. On the left-hand side of this floor is more office space. So I'm using more desks and chairs from the office set for this area. And again a cupboard and filing cabinet. OK, so that's most of the fixtures, fittings and furniture in for this section of the build. Now I'm ready to continue building the walls and I can add the windows and doors into the build. Here I'm continuing the same colour scheme for the internal walls as we used for the ground floor.
Here I'm adding the first set of windows, which are 1x2x3 frames and 1x4x3 frames. The windows in the front and back walls are a bit different from the ground floor as they're very wide windows made of several window pieces. Like the windows on the ground floor, these windows are set back into the external walls and on the inside they have surrounds in white bricks which are connected into the external walls by these white bricks which appear as coins on the outside of the building. They're matched by other white bricks at the corners which continue the pattern already established but they also help to tie the Lego bricks together in the structure of the walls. In the stairwell I'm using larger window frames with two glazing bars which reduces the number of small frames and window panes needed. There are internal doors into the stairwell and internally to the admin office on the right hand side although the left hand section is open with this arch and the doors and windows at the sides of this section are of course internal doors as they lead to the offices in the two wing sections on either side. I can continue to build up the walls all the way round including the internal walls and add the little window at the back of the washroom. Then the walls are finished off with a tiling layer which will allow the addition and removal of the next level of the building which will be the second or top floor. So that's this main or central section of this level of the building finished and I can move on now to the two wing sections. I'm going to start with the right hand wing section. This wing is built separately from the main section that I just built but will fit right next to it. The build starts with the floor plate which is made in exactly the same way as the one for the wing section on the ground floor that I made in the last video. The windows in the front and back start at floor level so I'll put the window sills in first then I can start building up the walls and put the first layer of windows in. Now this section is going to be the mayor's office. So before I get too far I'm going to work out how to put the furniture in here. So for the mayor's office I'm going to use some of the furniture from the boss's office from the office Lego set. Now if we compare this section of the build with the boss's office from the office set you can see that they are very similar at 16 studs wide but the one from the office is 12 studs deep whereas this wing section is only 10 studs deep. The office one has windows on two sides and mine has windows on three sides and the inset windows in mine mean that there's less room inside as well. 
In effect, I don't have these two rows of studs, so I have to miss something out. So I think I'm going to miss out these two chairs and this little lamp table. And I'm going to take this large cupboard out and use it in the office at the other end of the building. So now everything fits in here pretty well. And I can continue building up the walls and windows. At the top of the walls, there's a layer of bricks with studs on the side, onto which I'm attaching a row of round plates and little cheese slopes to make a frieze around the top. The walls are finished off with the now familiar layer of tiles with just a couple of studs to locate the roof when it's fitted on later. Lastly I can fit the downpipes on the outside. I'm quite pleased with the way that's turned out as the private office for the mayor. It's perhaps a bit small, but he has his secretarial support in the main section of the office right next door. This section will fit on the right hand side of the main section of the building and it's accessed from the main section through this internal door. So that's the build of this section finished. Now we'll move on to build the left-hand wing section. The left-hand wing starts with the same floor plate as the right-hand wing. And the walls are built in just the same way as the wing on the other side. This wing is going to be another office, which will be the office of the chief clerk. I've made a desk similar to the one in the boss's office in the other wing and some more of the furniture from the office set goes in here. That all fits in here in much the same way. As expected the big cupboard takes up a lot of space but I think it's still a reasonable looking office. This part of the build is finished off with the frieze, the tiling separation layer and the downpipes, the same as the other wing. This section will fit on the left hand side of the main section of the building. For those of you that are wondering, I am aware that the frieze sticks out beyond the side of the building and so it sort of breaks the rules for a modular building. So if I were to put this mock right next to um, a tall modular building, the frieze would have to be removed from the side. But as this is my mock and I know where it's going in my Lego city, I'm okay with it and I don't think it's going to be a problem. At the front of the building is the portico that shelters the main entrance to the building. The portico itself is the same height as the ground floor of the building and also acts as a balcony that can be accessed from the doors in the front of the first floor. The roof of the portico is built as a separate section so that it can be removed. It's a fairly simple build as it's built like a floor plate that fits on top of the portico itself and it's paved using 2x2 two two tiles as paving slabs. 
Round the outside is a balustrade to protect minifigs from falling off. And underneath is the lantern for the portico. This little assembly just clips onto the top of the portico like this. So as you can see that forms both the roof for the portico and the balcony for the first floor. So that's all four sections of this level of the building complete. And I can assemble these onto the parts of the build that I've completed previously. Again, this part of the build has gone pretty much according to the design and I haven't had to make any changes. I'm really pleased with the way the furniture all fitted into the office areas. So now we have the mayor's office, his support team, then the central circulation space, and on the other side of the building is the general admin office space and the office of the chief clerk. Now you can see how the balcony can be accessed from the doors in the front of the first floor. We've got the main entrance at the front of the building now looking good. And we can see how the staircase in the stairwell at the back connects the different floors of the building together. So that leads us on to the fact that there's another level of the building to construct and we should be getting close to adding the various sections of roof and the clock and carillon on top. So I'll break here and continue the build of this mock in the next video. So join me in the next episode of this series in which I'll be building the top floor of this town hall mock and the roof for the wings. I hope you enjoyed watching the build of this part of the mock. Thanks for your interaction with the channel. If you have any comments or questions, just let me know in the comments section below. Don't forget to hit the like button and use the bell button to be notified of new videos and subscribe to the channel to see more about my mocks, other builds and ideas and updates on my Lego City.